name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I thank God for each and every one of you, all my viewers. I give him every glory, every honor, and I give him every adoration in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I need to sincerely appreciate each and every one of you. Thank God for your prayers and your gifts, and uh, some of you, uh, and uh, some of you call on the phone to say seed. Only God can bless each and every one of you, and you will reap as you have sown in Jesus' name. Of course, and indeed, some of you that are used to this program, we are planning and we are praying we will still come back live to our normal program. But be that as it may, it has been fantastic. Honestly, I want to thank God for each and every one of you. Now, first and first, it's good to just uh, say that uh, our Wednesday services have gone nuclear, spiritually speaking. You must be there on time for you to get it. 10 is 10 and 12 is 12. And we keep to time. It has been happening. What is Wednesday for? Wednesday is for deliverance, where we pray one on one, because that is by the reason of the anointing, yokes are broken. If you have the power, you have the power, and we and you will learn how to pray, and you will uh, you will learn how to pray and understand the chemistry of prayer, and that is why I thank God for the turnout and people have been coming this year. It has been fantastic. Make sure you join and be part of the those who will testify to the glory of God. Of course, and indeed, you know our normal services, uh, that, that is for Friday, the first and the last Friday of every month, um, by 9 p.m., usually all night, is fantastic, and you'll be blessed. Sunday, of course, is the day of the Lord, and we'll begin from 9 o'clock in the morning to 11.30, and the second service is from 12 to 2. Why, once you step feet into Jesus' sanctuary ministry, you may not, have any food to eat because there's no food. You, but there's something you will, something must touch you. The presence of God must definitely touch you. When the choir, under choir administration, you cannot experience it. And people get their healing and their breakthrough. So be part of it. Try and be under the influence of uh, the choir and you will be blessed. Powerful ministration. And we give God the glory for the choirs. Uh, but be that as it may, um, I can't thank you enough, those of you praying for Jesus Sanctuary. We are believing in love for 2018. And uh, 2018 must do you well because it's doing us well because we have overcome them and you will ever overcome. In Jesus' most powerful name, I pray. I think I should turn to choir and uh, you'll be blessed. Uh, uh, watch out and God bless you. I want to assure you, you will be blessed. Choir. Father in heaven, how we love you. We lift your name in all the earth. May your kingdom be established. And now praise as your people declare your mighty
And to God be the glory and the honor, and to God be the adoration. This your voice will sound in heaven as well in the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. my Father. Well, of course, uh, today, uh, well, you know, we have the digital generation and the and the analog. I think I am in the. Uh, I have joined the analog now. Because where you meet over over digitalized and. Um, and uh, because I was blessed with the uh, youth last time, I was ministered, I was blessed with the administration. And I found out that it is needful and uh, equally expedient that we allow the youth to speak to youth because they know the language and the words and the phrases and uh, the words up and what to say to in order to um, uh, communicate or the jilling or the joy. Uh, would they know the words uh, because we are, of course, as it were. So at times, it's good to allow the children, the youth, not children, the youth to minister. And these ones, I thank God for them. Each of them have been blessed and got to give God the glory for what he's doing in their lives. So I want, so we are going to still speak about, we are still on voice, or rather the voices that we hear. The, the scripture cannot be broken. Go to John, please. Any of you can read for me. John 10, chapter 3. John 10, the third <coughs> verse. And watch. Yes, John 10, the third verse. Yes, and we tell. Yes, and ever. Yeah. John 10, verse 3. And yes, says, yes. To him the potter openeth. Uh -huh. And the sheep hear his voice. Uh -huh. And he calleth his own sheep by name. Uh -huh. And leadeth them away. So you see that, like I was saying that there is power about voice. <laughs> because there is the connectivity between the voice. And that is why when I hear a voice, you may not even want to respond because you don't know that voice. But there's a voice that will call your name. You must respond. Many persons have answered calls. Because why? There is a connectivity. But go to 1 Corinthians uh, 14, 10. Yes. He talk about the, in this world, 
you have all kinds and shapes and of voices speaking, especially at this end time. These children are trying. The children of this age, of this time, in their twenties and thirties, they are trying. In our own time, some years back, so many years back, not some, so many years back, you go to, you don't have phone, handset is everywhere. You have every but now, and you go and watch television in somebody's house or a general place. Now it is every home. Now there is even television in iPad or whatever they call it all over the place. And even children in primary school, in secondary school, in universities. Do you know the amount and the pressure of voices upon them? Please read it out for me, yes. First Corinthians 14 verse 10. Yes. And it says, There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices. Uh -huh. Aha. So I many what? Kinds, kinds of voices in the world. world. Yeah. And none of them is without signification. He said, There are many voices in the world, but underline. He said, None of them is without signification. It means that every voice carries weight. Every voice is important. Every voice has the ability to impact. And so we saw so the children. You, and you cannot understand why at this end time you are hearing a lot about things happening to children. And why the ch some children are being misled by other children. Some children are being mis are misled by people they trust. Parents, even, even mentors. And the words of it all, even men and women of God. Some use as it were, try to, but well, some try to derail children. The voice and they believe and thinking is the voice of God, is the word of God, is God speaking. But we want to come practical for us, for you to understand that in this world, it's not every voice you will obey. Even though the foundation is very important. So that you child, you if you're a child, a teenager, listening, I mean you are you will listen and hear from people of your age set or age mates that will speak to you that so that you can understand and appreciate not that your father or your mother is nagging. Oh, she nags a lot, and you are your father is nagging. It is for your own interest, it's for your good. Because in my in there is a proverb that says that if you don't hear. Is the fly that does not hear that follows the corpse into the grave. It means that, I swear to you, if you don't hear the voice of reason of your father, of your mother, of your parents, of your teacher, of your pastor, if they are speaking in righteousness, it will help you to direct your future and your destiny. And because there are so many hard voices out there to derail what God has planned for you. In Jeremiah 29, 13, it is clear. God said that my thought for you is of good and not of evil, but a voice of voices can derail. You know of a young king, the son of Solomon, how he was derailed by the voices of his classmates, I mean, of his age group. Peer group factor can be effective, can be destructive, can delay you can make you not actualize what God has ordained for you. And so it's good that you will listen. Of course, for you to know the difference between good and bad, and for you not to be influenced or bewitched by the voices that you don't know. Some people this age, evil has increased. Children are, some children are under spell. They don't hear the voices of their parents. They hear even the voices of the strangers more than the voices of their parents. Of course and indeed, a good father or mother will never derail a child. Because the, your, your parents that took care of you at that age and took care of you uh, all these years, they will not benefit. They, they will be proud to see you do well. Just I'm proud to see the children of Jesus and my own children excel and do well. But it depends on one factor. They do hear what we say. They do listen to what we have said. And I believe that no father or mother, let's stretch hands and pray first. Let's pray, Father. Our prayer for the teenagers, 
as your children will speak to them, my father, my all, they will continually hear the voice of reason, the voice of their parents, the voice of their teachers, the voice of their pastors. If those voices are in right, in right understanding, in Jesus' most powerful name, I pray. And Father, my Lord and my oh God, we are still praying. Every child under spell, under demonic, satanic, occultic spell, by any person, is they their peer group, are they their friends, are they their mentors, or any pastor, any minister, my Father, my all, today in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father, we pray they have been delivered from the forces of darkness. In Jesus' name I pray. All right, so I will just call up the, from, uh, uh, you uh, begin to share from college, and you go around like that if you have experiences, and that's it, so that it will bless the house. I mean, yes, our viewers, and God bless. Praise the Lord. Amen. Um, the experience I had, well, I've had quite a few. I think one of the ones that was very strange to me happened about a year ago. I'm talking about voices. And one of the scriptures, I think it's John 10, 5, it says that um, you will not follow the voice of strangers. Um, and my experience was that I was in, at one point I was in KFC with some friends. And I've know I got a call from a number that I've never, um, well, I didn't recognize the number. I just decided to answer the call. And I just started hearing the voice of an Indian person speaking. And they were, I just said, hello, who is this? Then they were just speaking in language, speaking, speaking, speaking. Something told me this isn't right. So I just said, but I didn't immediately heed to what was telling me this isn't right. I just said, I think you got the wrong number. They were continuing speaking. So I just immediately, I said, whatever you're saying, back to sender. I hung up. I thought that was the end of it. Ten minutes later, they called me back. They, so I just said, this is not right. They continued to speak. And they were speaking their language. Obviously, I was already praying at that point. But then this thing continued to happen, even when they were sending me text messages as well, asking, um, they were saying I was part. I don't know how they got my number. I didn't know how. Um, I, know I mentioned at that point, I mentioned to my pastor this story. And he said, of course, that maybe someone could have taken your name, etc. But it's something where, I know this happened over the period of a, a couple of months or two, they eventually stopped. Um, the reason why I wanted to share this is that Sometimes you don't know where people take your names to, especially when we're online, Facebook, um, social media, um, and some of the people that you relate with on the phone. But a lot of things are happening now, especially in this age where everyone's information is out there. There's a lot of strange things going on. Um, obviously, when these things happen, and it's like what happened to me, obviously, you have, it's always good to go into prayer. And knowing from also the pastor's experience, he mentioned something around that time of where someone may call him, but they'll, they'll make a pronouncement or something. And it was that experience that helped me in that point. And I, still, I just said I'll share that with the viewers. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. you know, that is very, very, very important and significant. You see, when they called and they were speaking in language he did not understand, the mere fact that you, you did not understand the language doesn't mean it will not work. That is key. That's why when people speak in tongues, the tongue is the language of the spirit. It doesn't mean that it will not resonate in the realm of man. I'm sure when he shared that story, because I had that experience in Nigeria, some will come here and begin to speak Arabic. Then I will reply, I will respond in tongues. Then I went into tongues. I was speaking in tongues. I, I did, and I don't stop until they stop. And I still call back the number and continued. I will, I will now call them back. Okay. Oh, I don't have a job. And somebody's creating one for me. Oh, God, thank you. Because, oh, yeah, you know, pastors, we have time now to pray. Masanda, Brakasando. I was speaking. And they, and they off. So after about one hour, I call back the, the, the Iran. They now switched off that phone. I decided to kill the line. Because I, I will be calling them every day. Even midnight, I will call. Ah! Somebody is looking for a job and they created one. So, what am I saying? So, the method, and that's why you don't respond and say mm, what that they say. And if somebody calls you, you don't know what the person has said. That's why if you watch on air, when I, when I was doing the live show, if you call me on the, on the phone and you are praying for me, 
If I didn't hear you well, I don't say amen. Because some may say, I'm going to die. Uh, God is. So I don't say amen until I hear. If you watch, you, you have to learn. It because this life, the NK debate says that, that since men have learned to shoot without missing, okay, fine, fair enough. I will I will learn to fly without patching. So let us pray. Let everybody straight up. Father, in the name that is above every other name. Anyone experiencing, anyone they are calling for evil, any person they are using satanic, demonic, strange language in order to speak to you, to your children, or to your wife or your husband, to derail you, to derail your destiny, Father, we cancel them today. Let that tongue, Father, will never wither in the name of Jesus. My Father, I thank you and I bless you. No demonic, satanic voice can resonate in the life of my viewers. In Jesus' most powerful name, I pray. Yes, okay. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, I'm going to read um, John 10, verse 27 quickly. And it says, um, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And the reason why I've given this scripture in relation to voices is to talk to um, youth and kids about listening to your parents when your parents say, Something. Sometimes it might seem that they are just repeating the same thing over and over again. Well, through my time in um, university, all my time through university, through my masters, every time I've seen other kids do things opposite of what my parents have told me, and then I've now seen the troubles that they have fallen into. So I always thank God, at least, thank God my parents were knowledgeable enough to tell me about things like this, of, of what not to do, because sometimes, Sometimes when I even see the kids, sometimes I don't blame them because sometimes I feel maybe their parents have not actually even spoken to them. Because sometimes their parents don't speak, some parents don't speak to their kids about certain things, and then the kids then try to then take their own life decisions or maybe hear what a friend is saying. And some of the time the counsels are different because everyone comes from different households. So your parents, one parent might tell a kid something that is true and right, another parent might not say or might tell a kid something and then once they now come out in life you you then find out that some, some of the kids that follow the right teachings of their parents they tend to excel and do a while the other ones that don't listen to their parents or maybe their parents have given i won't say wrong counsel but they have not had the experience or the exposure to help that child out then the child is now lost you know because i've seen it a lot in my youth sometimes you i see i see some little kids even in the university area and sometimes even the way they talk back to their parents when a parent is trying, trying to give them some valuable information, like you can hear the parents and they're just talking about their parents and I'm, I'm, I'm just there looking like, wow. It's like, it's, it's, it's very eye-opening because when you see the other side of what your parents have been telling you then, you're always grateful that you have parents to tell you things like that. So that's the message I give to the kids. It's always, to always listen to your parents because 99% of the time, your parents will never deceive you in anything they're telling you. Sometimes it might sound or too crazy or they're nagging or so, but they're, they're saying it because they've heard, they've seen so many, they've probably experienced it or heard other people's kids experiencing it. And so they don't want you to follow the same fate. Thank you. Wow. The, I mean, that is straight. I mean, I wish parents would note this. You see, where you, you say that there are certain things, it's clear, but he said something. He said at times too, their parents have not told them. So that is the angle I will come from. Because at times these children don't know the left from the right. And either parents looking for pounds and dollars they will get, and they tend to abandon home. You can't eat your cake and have it. You can't look for money by all means. And you can't eat your cake and have it. Of course, the wisdom of having father working and mother at home or working on full time, there is still wisdom in that. And because by the end of the day, that is your access. Because you can have everything and you don't have children to take possession. It's the most painful thing. And because there must be transfer. You, you must grow old. And, and there must be change of, uh, of birthing. And there must... So the children... But if, if the foundation, Psalm 11 verse 3, you say if the foundation is wrong, there's nothing pastors can do. No pastor can do anything. They say there's nothing the righteous can do. So, and that is a very telling experience. But let us pray. Everybody straight up. Father, in the name that's above 
every other name. My Lord and my God, my Father, let the voice of the parents, my Father, no person can arrest or steal away or destroy the, the voice of parents. Let the when parents should speak, Father, give the children that harm. There's a child looking at me. My Lord and my God, in that your parents don't hate you, but they need to tell you the truth. And the truth that you know will keep you and deliver you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. My Lord and my God, deliver our children from forces of darkness, from every other voice, contrary voices, speaking unto them. Those who are deceiving our children, are they uncles, are they cousins, are they friends, are they teachers, are they whoever they are. My Lord and my God, in the name of Jesus, open the eyes and the understanding of our children so that they will hear the voices of their parents and so that it shall be well with them. In Jesus' powerful name, we pray. Yes, sir, I will do so. Praise the Lord. Um, so, um, my advice would be to be careful um, of the voices we listen to. Uh, for example, um, when I was younger, it was always my mom and I, and we moved around a lot, so um, we weren't in the same place for too long, we'd move six months later. So, um, finally we got a place, we got a house, it was a big house. But um, my mom was a, a single mom. She always worked, so I was always at home in the house, alone. And um, I would always hear voices. But back then, we weren't. We didn't have the knowledge we have today. Um, but I come from a particularly occultic side. My father's side is very occultic, and they're still in a shrine. They still um, dedicate their male children to the village shrine because um, it's of, it's my, my father's side is a family of males and every male child will have to go through that um, dedication except for me because my parents managed to bring me um, abroad so I was exempt from that. So um, I, would, I would be alone and I'll be hearing voices but obviously back then you just thought oh it's nothing you know or sometimes you, I, I might even answer um, ignorantly. So um, there was one time I had a dream and I was in the house alone. I was probably doing something and I was downstairs, but someone upstairs was calling me. So I thought, oh, it's probably my mom. So I, you know, I said, yes, mom. Then I went upstairs and then I opened the door and then I just saw a stranger. I didn't know who this person was. So I just woke up. But then the next day, I got very ill, and I was very ill for like a whole week. I couldn't go to school, I couldn't do anything. But um, eventually, uh, I, I got better, and we prayed through prayers and stuff. But, um, but we still, the funny thing is, we still didn't put together that it was through that name calling and through that invocation that I got that illness. So I just want to tell people that, um, Please be careful of the voices you hear. Um, don't hear any voice if you don't see the person because they might be calling you onto death. They might be calling onto failure, onto sickness. Lucky for me, uh, I thank God for my life. I didn't die, I'm still alive here today to give this testimony. So yeah, just be careful and yeah, be blessed. I think uh, that is very telling. This one is personal experience, very personal. If I know is uh, as it were, captures or or summarizes or what well, it's very powerful that he said his own experience and we hear voice is there, and look at it is it is it to call unto sickness some voices that to call unto shame unto scandal unto disgrace unto death these things are real this is, uh, I, I, look i'm sorry i'm mean, i'm sorry we don't teach you theology we teach you spirituality so that you will know what is going on and it will help you to navigate the journey of life, the challenges of life. He can never answer such call again. And that's the way you hear a call. I have taught them in the church. Don't say, who is that? that is, and so it's not an answer. If you hear a call, like, I think I remember some, the very weak or second 
week I came to London, I was hearing, so I was laughing. I was telling them that the witches in Nigeria have tried me. I have passed tests there. So this one is that because because there's a call, so you don't answer. And I taught my children, even in the church, when you hear a call, is it your father? Is it your mother? Say, who is this? Who is that? It's not an answer. It is a question. But if you say yes, honey, mommy, daddy, you have answered the call. It's very important. Numbers 23, 23 is not there for joke. He said no enchantment or divination. What is enchantment? What is divination? There's no enchantment or divination without the power of invocation. What do you invoke? You call. You invoke through calling. If, oh my goodness. If Jesus Christ called up Lazarus, he didn't say, you dead man, arise. The Bible says, he said, Lazarus, he called his name. Oh, I wish I have time. I wish I have time. I wish I have time. You see, why did not why did why did Jesus can call his name? Because you answer to your name. Is there something that follows you? Everything that we acquired on earth, none will follow you to heaven. Your car, your house, your coat, your suit, everything. What will follow you to heaven is your name. And that is what you acquired on earth. And that's why the Bible says. Is your name written in the Lamb Book of Life? So names follow you. And that's why before they do anything, they use your name to call you. Because the name is a platform in the realm of the spirit. And that's why they cannot just call you by saying, you man, come. No, they must call a name. And you answer to your name. If you hear you, you man, you, will not, you are not bound to answer. But if you hear your name, like he had his name, he asked, he walked upstairs. I did the, uh, I mean, fair to say one testimony two, uh, two weeks ago or so. He had his name. He said they opened the door. Meanwhile, while I was downstairs praying, anyway, they would call his name. Meanwhile, he was having an encounter. Where, where they call his name, instead of him to answer, he, he, he told them that the blood of Jesus is against you. He wanted to answer, but his, his tongue, tongue to the blood of Jesus is against you. Because he that is in him is too much. And let us pray. My God and my God, in the name that is above every other name, thank you for revelation. You reveal to redeem. My father, my own children being called, families be, being called, parents being called, unto shame, unto scandal, unto disgrace, unto failure. Father, we cancel them in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Whoever that is under the influence of my voice, the voices of the wicked one will never overthrow you. They will never oppress you. And they will never destroy you. In Jesus' powerful name I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, my own contribution to this whole matter would be that as youths, we, we meet so many different people. So many different people have opinions about our life. If somebody is saying something, something to you or about you that you know is contrary to what you want to do, contrary to the ordination of God in your life, you have to cancel it and you have to, you have to be able to reject it because the word of God makes us know that death and life are in the power of the tongue. So the words that people speak to us, they can manifest and they they there can be a seed in our lives that manifests into something that we want or either something that we don't want. So the testimony I have is one of my friends in, in university. She was a very, very clever, clever girl. Uh, no, take time. Go back to that. You said you did a very powerful ex exposition. Go back and repeat it. It says that when somebody tells you something, it got, it's a voice. You, you don't have to keep it. Yeah, when, when yeah, somebody tells you something that is, neg that is negative towards it, your life, yeah. you, you, don't have to, you don't have to accept it. Like, for, you can be in school and your teacher will tell you you're a stupid boy. This You don't have to be rude back to the teacher, but you don't have to allow, you don't have to allow that thing to manifest or marinate in your life. So my testimony was with one of my friends at university. She was a very, very intelligent girl. She got a first class at university, did her master's distinction, went to law school, got a distinction. But she had one of her, one of her friends. They had been friends since, since, I think, the age of three years old. 
So a couple of, some incidences transpired, and then her and the friend had an argument. And in an argument, you just tell somebody, oh, you are a stupid girl, go away. But her friend now decides to start telling her, you are going to be giving birth like this, that, and the other. You are never going to have a job. You are going to be useless in life, this, that, and the other. So my friend, she, she's not really that strong, that strong in her Christianity. She, she brought up a Catholic. As soon as her friend was telling her this, the first thing that came out of her mouth is back to sender. And she, she told her friend back to sender, ended the conversation, hung up the phone. We we'll now come to find out that everything her friend, everything her ex friend was telling her that that will happen to her, it has now gone back. It's happening to her ex friend. Her ex friend is now the one that is messing up her life. The ex friend is now the one that is moving up and down, being useless, being useless in her life. And it's how I think. If she had not returned those words that her friend had said to her, they would have manifested in, in her own life. But she knew that what her friend was telling her was not correct. She knew that what her friend was telling her was not part of her destiny. So she returned it back to Senda because why would you? Why would your friend tell you tell you that in the first place? That person is clearly somebody that does not have your best interests at heart. So even if it's a teacher in school, even if you are playing with your friends and you're cracking any silly joke and they're saying anything to you that you know is not for you. You need to be able to cancel it and you need to be able to return it back to sender on the spot. So, that's my question. Oh, no, that is a very effective and wonderful everyday experience. The key thing there is key, very key. Even when you are talking on the phone, don't laugh over it. Because words are powerful. Words are the ability to go beyond you. Do you know that words live beyond you? I've seen that people who are still preaching. There are some pastors that have gone, but their tape is still playing. It means that words don't die. Of course, words don't die. That's why this word of God cannot die. Because we are made in the image of God, our words cannot die. Whatever my father told me as a child, I still recall them. I still remember them. He's no more. Whatever he has written in words or spoken is still in the fried place. He's, but he's no more. So words don't actually die. Words don't die. And that's why you can watch some tapes and you see a pastor is late. But he's still teaching and teaching what is happening in the world that he has left. What is the key of the lesson? Or what do you take out of this? Number one. You must immediately return or reject what you don't want. And don't be, um, you may not be rude. You just say, I reject it. I even tell my, I even say in the church, I say something as a man of God that, I did, that will not resonate. You tell, I reject it, but I have one of my members, even if I tell it, I, I, I reject it, <laughs> then I began to laugh. It, it is not an insult, no. Anything that somebody can speak out of flesh, I have flesh, so I can I can speak out of flesh. But there's a way to reject something and you are not being rude. You, you are not being sassy. Whether it's an uncle, whether it's a head person, but, but you don't go and insult people, insult your father. And your father say, ah, what you are doing to me, your children will you say I reject it. It doesn't work because Galatians 6 9, whatever you sow, you must reap. But when you are discussing with people, are they friends, are they mentors, are they anything they, that is opposite to your destiny, you don't joke with it. And that is my take on this matter. And I think, uh, you, uh, I, think I need to commend it and every one of you. It was a very a short notice and I'm sure this um, um, teenagers of your age, your people are middle, uh, you are not children, you are not adults. You are in between and in between. But these guys are the ones who are digitalized. We are the, we have gone into analog uh, um, level. So that you can hear them and they're all doing well in life. And your children will do well in life in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. My Lord and my God, even parents, because of time, even parents, there are words you, you don't use over your children. I remember my father. In fact, I remember this story again. I need to tell it. When we offend, uh, we attend them. We attend them. I mean, yeah, we, we attend them. And then, 
if you do something wrong that is that is that we my father need to punish you once in a while he will say he will, he will tell you you will have hundred children you two hundred children ha, as a child I would think in my head but he said he's so upset he said you have hundred children two hundred children you, you see what I'm seeing hundred children two hundred but if it's not I know it is even blessing but he will not curse us he will, he will not say stupid useless failure shame no he will tell you you have hundred children. You the, the more you are, you you are seeing, the more children you will have. This one two hundred, then this one two fifty. Then he asks, as a child, how we take it? How will he cause it to happen? But he don't know. As, but I grew up. But it, when, when I became a pastor, I knew the power of life and death. So as parents. Be careful what you say over our children. Even the children of Jesus Sanctuary, we provide them. And we, I decree over them. And that no contrary voice will walk in their life. And everybody stretch hand. My Father, we thank you and we bless you. Contrary voices in the life of our children that, is, that may affect them or their destiny, it will be nullified in the name of Jesus. Is it by parents? Is it by uncle? Is it by friends, is it by teachers, is it by pastors and the mentors, anything contrary spoken against any child of that the flesh of my voice, it has been nullified forever. In Jesus' most powerful name we pray. Amen. I think we go back to choir. It has been a fantastic one for uh, your take at the fantastic choir and with you. We give you all the glory. We give you honor, we give you all the glory, we give you honor, we give you all the glory, we give you
I know you enjoyed it. And to him be the glory, to him be the honor, to him be the adoration. The it is well with you and your children. There is a, a woman there crying. It is well with you. Bye bye and God bless.